There are two different types of headstands that you can learn in yoga, and for most, the tripod headstand is the easier one to learn first. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's get to it. This headstand is called a tripod headstand for a reason, because there's three foundational points on the mat that we use to balance on. Number one and number two are our hands, and then number three is the crown of our head, and that's the flat bit at the top where you'd balance a book or wear a crown, which importantly is not your forehead. So to set our foundation of these three points on the mat, we place our hands like we would for a plank, shoulder width apart, index finger points forwards, and then that crown of the head goes way out in front of the fingertips, forming that triangle. So as the crown of the head comes down, I can see my fingertips. The most common mistake people make here is to place their head between their hands or very, very close to their hands. And then you have such a smaller surface area to spread your weight between to balance, usually results in everyone toppling over backwards because you've got no way to control your body weight and we don't really want that. So make sure you're forming that deep triangle and a good rule of thumb is to be able to see your fingertips as you look back towards your toes. So find that triangle base, that tripod base, and then from here, we're gonna tuck the toes, lift the knees away from the mat, and we've come into this half headstand. So that means our feet are still on the floor. The elbows want to stay pulling inwards rather than flaring out towards the sides so that we can recruit as much strength in our shoulders as possible here. From here, I can start to walk my feet into towards my head. So as you can see, that makes my hips stack higher and higher up on top of my shoulders. From there, we can test to see if we can bring one knee onto the back of one tricep. And if you're brand new to this, you can try one leg at a time just to get the feeling of being upside down. As and when you feel all right there, you can see if both knees can step up. And ta-da, you're into a headstand, hopefully. So this is our little egg headstand, where the knees stay on the back of the triceps, the heels pull in towards your bum, and you're in this small little compressed shape. We're gonna come down out of it if you're practicing along. We try not to practice or hold our tripod headstands for super long periods of time because there is a portion of our body weight going through the head. Uh, so for this reason, three to five breaths as you're trying it or holding it, then allow yourself to rest. This that gives your muscles of your upper body a chance to rest and recover. So you can make sure that it's those that are helping us hold the balance rather than our necks and our head. So if you're ready to give it another go, find your foundation of that triangle base. Let your hips lift and let your knees step in on top of your elbows. Now you'll notice that the closer your knees step to your elbows, the easier this shape feels because the weight is spread more evenly across our triangular foundation. So if you want to try to advance this and, and move further towards a straight-legged headstand, let your knees start walking up your triceps closer towards your armpits. This stacks your hips even higher up on top of your shoulders, preparing for a more straight up headstand where you can lift your legs. Before we go there, we want to see if we can find the control to stop using our arms for support. So one knee at a time, you can see if one leg can come to meet the other. Stepping it back onto the tricep, find the other side, and just find a little bit of comfort with the legs moving here whilst holding the balance and using your core to not need that supporting arm. As I said before, make sure you're giving yourself adequate rest. Allow yourself to come up and just give yourself a moment to feel normal, back the right way up, and then we can see if we can take it further. With those knees on the back of the triceps, we can start to see if both knees can come together in front of the torso. So now we're not using our arms as support at all. This is a tucked headstand and is a really great place to build core strength, holding your legs together as though they're one big leg. From here, always when we move in a headstand, we move very slowly with control. If we start to extend the legs towards the sky, first we think of the thighs moving away from the belly. And as those um, thighs find height, we can then start straightening out the legs. As they reach towards the sky, squeezing together, imagine you're holding a piece of paper between your thighs and reach the toes upwards, squeezing the muscles of the legs, squeezing your bum muscles, your core muscles. And make sure you reserve enough energy to come back down. Maybe come back the way you came, place the knees back onto the triceps, and then step your feet to the floor. Or perhaps if you're feeling very strong, you can see if you can lower your feet, slow and controlled, all the way down to the mat. 
Keeping your core engaged will help prevent body wobbles. So think of bracing your abs and drawing your rib cage and hip points towards each other. This is the same kind of movement pattern as a tucking of the tailbone. So hopefully one of those two cues makes sense in your brain as everybody thinks of body movements differently. With the legs, I find that pointing my feet helps me remember to keep my legs very engaged so they're not just two floppy limbs that end up going to throw me off my balance. So the way to modify a tripod headstand is generally just to work to the point where you tend to get stuck. Whether that being working on holding your half headstand and getting used to being upside down, that might be working on getting one knee to rest on the back of the tricep, or perhaps that's you working on getting the knees to leave the triceps into your little tuck. Building the strength to hold a headstand or the coordination to understand what your body is doing whilst you're upside down takes some time. So don't expect this to be an overnight result. Work at the point that challenges you until it feels less challenging and then you can move on and progress. However, a common complaint is a sore top of our head. The top of our head isn't used to being on a hard floor, so it's natural that it'll feel a bit uncomfortable when we first try to learn this. Just like the backs of your arms can get a bruise or four when you're learning crow pose. Your head simply needs time to toughen up. What you should really avoid doing is using something big and squishy to rest your head on. This is wobbly, this is unstable, and it's not safe for your neck. If you've been practicing and you're getting very comfortable in your tripod headstand, you can start to advance things with perhaps forming different shapes. You can take stag legs, you can take split legs, or you can take diamond legs. Or if you're really going for it today, why not see if you can land your knees back onto your triceps and then lift your head off of the mat and into crow pose. Thanks for watching and I hope these steps and tips helped you get upside down today. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. If you'd like to work on some other yoga arm balances, then you can find a list of them in this playlist here. Or if you'd like to take a class that includes this headstand you've just learnt, you can find that here. Clicking like helps me know if this kind of video is helpful for you. So click the thumbs up if so and subscribe to know when my next video goes out.